to the business at hand. We'll get to hey, the business. Hey, is it five o'clock, Ed? Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to Watch Me Work, where we sit around and work simultaneously, and then we talk about your work and your creative process. I'm SLP, Susan Lloyd Parks. I've been doing the show for like 15 years. We started in a theater down the street from the public in New York City, and then we moved to the public theater in New York City, and then when COVID hit, we moved on to Zoom, where we are happily living now. The new work development department at the public theater is 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 hosting us under their beautiful umbrella. And um, basically, what do we do? We work for 20 minutes and then we talk about your work and your creative process. And if you should have a question about your work and your creative process, New Work Development Department, tell us how to get in touch, please. Thank you. Yes, yes. Um, hi, everyone. When you have a question, please go ahead and use your raise the hand function in the bottom corner of your Zoom. And we'll get a nice cue going and we will call on your name and ask you to unmute to ask your question. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Let's uh, get the party started. Happy June. 20 minutes. Here we go.
Okay. Okay, it's that wonderful time where we answer your questions about your work or your creative process if you have a question. Uh, yeah. Ah, ah. Looks like, ah. Uh, looks like Nikki's already got a question. So feel free to uh, unmute and ask your question, Nikki. Nikki in the dark. In the yes, dark. can you hear me? Yes, we yep. can hear you. Yes, I want to know the purpose of this Zoom class. The purpose? Yes. What are we supposed to gain from hearing you, seeing you, watching you work? Oh, were you watching? I, yes, I, I've been on the, uh, yes, but I didn't realize the first 20 minutes was silent. Oh, well, well, it's silent only because we're muted. I wasn't silent, actually, when I was working. And other people but, might not be silent either. But what, would, what did you do? Well, Maybe I couldn't watch it. Uh, well, what, no, what, it, it, mm -hmm. I've been on, I started at five o'clock. I couldn't watch anything. What is it that you did that I missed? We were working, all of us, working on our individual projects. But you and, didn't speak for the first 20 minutes. I didn't speak to the group, no. I spoke to the muse and made I understand, I understand I understand so everybody was writing their own thing in silence for the first 20 minutes or we were all playing the harmonica I didn't I wasn't watching anybody else I was just watching myself were uh, you so writing because I, I mean what could we watch you work what what you were doing well I, today I was playing the harmonica I got the oh. I have the harmonica yeah so I was actually playing the harmonica today I'm learning um some Bach on the harmonica and uh, that's what I was doing. But uh, we're oh. free to do whatever we, yeah, it's but, like- But free, when you know? were playing the harmonica, nobody could hear you. That was the idea, yeah. I understand. I just want to understand everything. I'm a person who has to understand every little detail. It's okay. So I'll, right. I'll try to explain the entire universe to you in less than 12 seconds. We get together. We work on our own thing. And then in the time that is now- we, you ask me questions about your work and your creative process. I'm over 12 seconds and I try my best to respond. That's basically all it is. Okay. I would like to ask you a question. Perhaps you could help me. I'm Fantastic. struggling. Uh, I'm struggling with a monologue, monologue that I have to have ready in about two days. Oh and goodness. I wondered if you could help me because I'm struggling on how to make it absolutely cogent and mesmerizing. Well, that's a really great question. Having made many cogent and mesmerizing things, perhaps I am the one to answer your question. Um, uh, who are you going to read it to? I'm in a, you see, uh, I'll tell you the gist of the monologue uh, if you're interested. Um, uh, but, but, well, let me tell you, Nikki, it sounds like you're new. Let me just tell you, while we do not have time to actually read our work out loud to the group. We don't have yes. that time because there are a lot of people here who all want to talk about their work. I so, was going to read it to you. I was going to tell you in a few words what the gist was. Like three words, a few? Yes. The Great. importance of the, the importance of humor in life, why that is mandatory should be on every school curriculum. That's the gist of it. Fantastic. So do you have a lot of jokes in your in your in your monologue? No. Oh, no, it's not a question of joke. It's a question of philosophical curriculum that should be mandatory in school. Our world is a dismal failure. I'm trying to remedy it. I think that if we made it humor right from newborns onwards in, in every step of the learning process, uh, uh, we would eradicate ignorance and hostility and all the evils of the world today. I think it's fabulous. How long okay. is your How long is your lecture? How long is it going? Well, well, we're limited to two minutes. I think my last mono, my, my last monologue and my last show was very successful. See, so you've got you're on a roll. In other words, no, we're in a class. Everybody does their own little thing. But the last time, uh, it was right after Valentine's Day, and it focused on the four letter word. And I, it, uh, the monologue was two minutes of why I despise that word. I took Romeo as an example and why I despise Romeo because. It was all fickle. That word is fickle. It can turn on a dime. And it's not a good value that everybody loves. 
anyway, that that was, but everybody seemed to like it. Tell us how it goes. Come back when we're back here. I believe we're back next week. We'd love to hear how it, how it turns out. Sounds like it's okay. going to be a great lecture, a monologue, actually. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next. Who's next? Thank you so much, Nikki, and welcome to Watch Me Work. Alisa, uh, thank you for raising your hand. Feel free to unmute yourself. Hello. Hi, everybody. Hey, Lisa. Good to see you again. It's it's good to be here. Thank you very much. Um, so I've um, uh, this is a more of a comment, not so much a question. Um, but I recently returned from my first writing residency. Oh, congratulations! Thank you. Um, it was in Italy. Well, even better. It gets better and better. We love this. Okay. We're, we're in Italy. We're in Italy. I was in Assisi. Assisi. Oh, lovely. With the, the saint, Francis. Yes, many saints, actually. There's oh, really? okay. saints everywhere you look in Assisi. Amazing. Amazing. Including a brand new 15-year-old saint. Did they did they canonize the young man person? They took him a second step closer to being a saint. Oh, all right. Okay. Yeah. That's very exciting. Yes, it was it was remarkable. Really re remarkable. Um, and, and the funny thing is people say, well, how was it? What did you do? Did you get work done? And, um, yes, I did all of those things. It was great. I met a lot of people and it's, um, kind of a difficult experience to process what exactly happened to you. And, you know, being in this, you know, however you feel about religion, being in this very spiritual center, you know, and how does that impact you and it impacted me in a way but i don't i don't know i don't have the words to describe it yet so but my advice is um like everybody else or my thought is i applied for residency after residency i've submitted to journal after journal i've done that whole thing this is the first group or thing that said yes and it was unbelievable. I just sat there and said, oh, I got a residency. I got a residency. And I, I, yeah, I was stunned. Um, so I just want to let everybody know <laughs> to please keep going. Don't stop. Um, it does happen. Um, and it's like magic when it does. And it was a completely wonderful and different experience than what I expected. So, and I've, I've thought about this, I've been back three weeks and every week I wanted to say something about it, but it seemed a little weird. So I decided not to, but this week I said, no, um, if I'm just a regular old writer sitting here in Los Angeles and I can do it, then anybody else can do it too. So go for it, Forza, as we would say in Italian. Thank you so much, Lisa. That's such a great thing to hear. And congratulations to you, first and foremost, on just getting the residency, going there and getting some work done while you were there. That's absolutely fantastic. And you were absolutely right. I completely agree. You know, you got to just keep applying, keep trying, keep throwing, throwing yourself out there or putting yourself out there. You know, thank you for that. That's very wise and helpful. You're welcome. Thank you, everybody. Mm -hmm. Hey, congratulations, Lisa. That's wonderful. Thank you. Uh, so we don't have any other hands raised, but we definitely have a lot of time for questions. So I wanted to offer in a space. Any other questions from anyone? I have yes. a question. Uh, you know, Nikki, we actually have a queue going and I see Lou's hand up. So we're going to go to Lou next and then we'll go to you again. Thank you. Um, Lou, thank you. You can unmute yourself. Hey, Lou, how you doing? Great to see you, SLP. Great to see Great everybody. Great to see you. How's it going? It's going well. Um, I feel like this is the um the update episode of the uh, of Watch Me Work, if I may say. But I did want to loop back because when I was at a residency a few weeks ago, Lisa, um, I talked about some feedback I got um, about my platform and sharing things on Substack. And you gave me some great advice, which basically was, why don't you, I'm paraphrasing, have some joy around it, have some fun around it and ask what to do. And that really moved me. And I wrote uh, some stuff and I've started a Substack. And oh. wouldn't, wouldn't you know, I did want to share, 
I have been enjoying it so completely. And I have spent many years thinking that that would be the worst thing I could do for a million reasons that we don't need to say. But it was something about what you said to me and the time I heard it. And um, and I'm finding what I'm finding is it's been a really great tool to work out ideas and kind of like sit with what do I think about things that are happening in, in current time. I often write in memoir and nonfiction. I go all the way back. And mm -hmm. what I'm finding with this process is I'm like picking up sort of like themes in the world and current themes and news. Mm -hmm. And that's a whole different way that I've been thinking. And it's brought some real fresh energy to me. And also 130 people decided they wanted to subscribe to my newsletter, which I am was thrilled about. And I'm really excited. And so it's also given me like a little bit of a vote of confidence, like, oh, people are opting in to read what I want. So, so I think, you know, my question is, is more about, um, is so with all that, my question is a little just, I would love to hear your thoughts on audience and, and the, the quantity and quality, because even in this world, I will say there's one thing that's happened, which is a little what I, what I didn't want to happen, which is my, um, every time someone follows me, like it does some kind of weird chemical reaction in my brain and I feel worthy. And then it, when it has slowed down, I start to feel like, oh man, uh, I overstayed my welcome or da, da, da. And so there's a little bit of that, like back and forth of like the approval, um, like the, I'm thinking of like the monkeys in the cage, you know, they press the button to like get the, the jolt. And, mm -hmm. and I'm like, a hundred is great. And I even saw your reaction. I'm excited now. I'm like, why isn't it 200? Why isn't it? So I don't know. I just kind of wanted to talk about, you know, if a tree falls in a creative process and X number of people see it or like just how to manage the idea of like reach as success or or numbers of people as the evaluating tool and how to sit and like, I'm happy I'm writing and I'm I'm excited that this has become something that's energizing. And I'm already kind of seeing how I can get to that like, oh, but it's only this much or it's only you, do, you know what I'm getting at a little bit maybe yeah I, I know I know what you're getting at and it's just I mean you, it can be the the a solution not the solution but a solution can be as simple as be mindful of what you're saying you know it's like every I mean like every day if you woke up and went oh fuck I hate my apartment or whatever. I'm just, you know, I don't know if you even live in an apartment. Oh, fuck. I hate my, you know what I mean? Oh, fuck. I hate my spouse or whatever. That's not in your case. That's not true. And because you've spoken highly of your partner, but you know, what if one said that? Then well, it, it, it would help to be mindful that that's the attitude you're waking up with every morning. So, oh, darn. Why aren't, why don't I have more followers? For example, just, just, just why'd you say that? You know, question that. Mm -hmm. instead of jumping into some wonderful psychological philosophical conversation about the meaning of whatever the fuck just look at what's coming out of your mouth basically lou right i mean or in your it's not even coming out of your mouth it's no. going out, out into your head through like your your nasal passageway or whatever it is up there <laughs> up there right it's going up there it's through your head so we can be mindful of our thoughts. Just maybe we can just try that. Yeah. So that every time you catch yourself saying, hey, I've got 100 followers. That's great. Yay. Hey, and I'm going to write some tomorrow. Why did I have 200? Then why don't you counter? Be a good friend, right? Yeah. Why did I have 200? Well, you just started doing it yesterday or last week. Mm -hmm. and, and three weeks ago, you hated even the idea of it. You come a long way in a month. Keep going. Pat Thanks. yourself on the back. You see what I mean? Why don't we flood the mind or the ear or the heart or the room with some positive affirmations that reflect what's really going on instead of some blah, blah, right? Yeah. Shit that makes us feel bad because that's the core of it, really. It's not about the dopamine hit and the rats doing whatever. I mean, the rats doing the thing because they want cocaine and that's a, that's something else kind of. This is something we have a little bit more say over. Literally, it's what's coming out of your mouth. Into your ears. You're the only one thinking in your mind. 
unless you want me to get in there and your mom. <laughs> well, things turn out really great when you get in there, SLP. So I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind. Well, well, okay. Well, look, <laughs> so I'm going to be in there. I'm going to be sitting there like in a chair off to the side. I know. And every time you go, wah, wah, I'm going to go, mm -mm, you don't need to say yeah. that. Why don't you say something nice to yourself instead? Like that. There I'll be. What color is the chair? Where I am? Where I'm sitting in your mind. Oh, uh, it's red. It's like right. a room. Right. There I am. Yeah. Like, hey, hey, really? Do you want to do that? Okay. Yeah, it's so helpful because it's essentially what kicked my ass into doing it. It's the same thought. It's this it's the same joyous thought. And it, it really is such momentum and it works every time. And then I forget. And then I come back and you remind me and on I go, it gets easier, but it's still hard. You know, Yeah, it gets easier. It gets easier. And the times between the times that we forget and the times we remember might become shorter. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they hope, hopefully they will. Hopefully, you know, you won't be hitting your head against the wall and bleeding and stuff before you go, why am I doing that? Yeah. You know? Um, and that's, that's, that is what we're definitely working on in this uh, class, workshop, experience. Yeah. You know, it's just to be mindful, just to be more mindful of the stuff that we say to ourselves. Thank you so much, as always. I appreciate it so much. so much. And if you ask the same question next week, I might have a different answer. But that's what we're saying today. Okay. Thank you again. Thanks, everybody. You're welcome, Lou. Thank you. And happy, I mean, congratulations on your sub stack, girl. Come on. So, so, Thank you. So amazing. I mean, oh my goodness. Congratulations. Okay. Thank you. Yes, yes. I agree. Celebrating you, Lou. Congratulations. Right? Yes. Thank you so much. Um, so we have a bit of a cue going. So Nikki, we're gonna go to you again next. And then after that will be Emma. Thanks, Emma. Hey Nikki. So Nikki, you can unmute yourself. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Nikki, uh, do you have another question for us for SLP? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, hon. Oh, you muted again. Uh, it's tricky. You just have to like hit it once and then don't touch it. Oh, there you go. You're okay. There you go. I think this should work now. Okay. Can you there, hear me? Yes, ma'am. I can hear you. Okay. I wanted, she said she loved the residency, but she didn't say what was paramount. Like, what was the most unforgettable, memorable thing she learned in the residency? How did it help her? Uh, that's what I want to know. And secondly, the other speaker, I wanted her to examine her motivation. It sounded narcissistic and needy. And I feel that people should be more altruistic and aim to benefit mankind rather than our own personal needs. Cool. Though we're taking questions for me. Neither of those were. If you want to get in touch with Lou or Lisa um, after this program, you're welcome to. Or if you guys want to share your information in the chat and continue those conversations, that'd be great. But we're talking about your work and your creative process. Um, should we move on to the next person? Emma, do you have a question about your work or your creative process for me? You'll yes, get the hang I do. of it. Don't worry. You'll get the hang of it if you just hold on through this session. Go ahead, uh, Emma. Okay. So I had a question about kind of organizing your own brain because I'm currently trying to get like a shitty first draft done and <laughs> I keep having these like other ideas and I want to explore this and this seems cool. And so my writing time is being productive, but not necessarily the thing that I set a goal for myself to do. So do you have any advice on how to just organize yourself so that you do get these goals done? Does that make sense? Yeah, it, it does make sense. That's a, that's a great question because you know, even it sounds like you're, you've got a goal, you've got a project that you want to work on, you're setting aside some time, you're setting aside generally the same time each day. Not necessarily the same time because of schedule, but um, about an hour every day. Okay. And because so, so you do you set aside the morning? Or are you an afternoon writer or an, an evening, a night owl kind of person? Uh, definitely evening, night, mostly. 
Okay. Okay. So yeah, it's, it's sometimes you, it's hard to, I mean, you spend the time writing, but you, you kind of write other things in addition to your main project kind of thing. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, and at the end of your writing period, say that hour, then correct me if I'm wrong, if I misheard, you feel like you haven't made as much progress on your main writing thing because you're kind of doing a little bit of this and a little bit of this and a little bit of this over here. Yes, I feel like I have like four different things going, but nothing's actually getting finished. Right. Right. Um, do you have a, feel, a sense of what's the thing you want to finish most? That's the main thing, correct? Mm. Can you, how many pages do you have till you get it finished? Um, I'm trying to do about 60 pages. Right. So, okay. So, so how many pages left do you have? Like 40. 40. Okay. Okay. So you think if, if you could do like two pages a day, that would be something, right? Mm. Is there any chance that you could also um, work outside of your uh schedule writing time probably yes i'm just trying to make this number one project on your goal sheet right the mm. only thing you want to work on and it to be the most important thing i mean if anyone in this group has ever gone on a date ever with a, with a person how you know <laughs> Okay, you're laughing. Yeah, see, okay, so you say you find someone like, oh, I like them a lot, right? And then you want to focus on them, but then you see some information about somebody else that you might also want to date. And then you're dating a lot of people, but you're not quite spending the time. It's Sometimes we do that because it's it's frightening to sort of say, well, this is who I really like, you know? And your work is saying, do you really like me? And you're saying, well, nah, I don't really know because I, I got this thing over here, Right. So your work might pull back a little bit too. And then you're both pulling back a little bit and you're both kind of get, becoming more frightened or shy as the day go, as the days go on, you know? So I would suggest just, do you write with music? With music, listening to music? No, not usually. Okay. Can what, try you might, what you might do is you have an hour of writing time, right? What if you mm. set yourself like, like 15 minute increments, right? Okay. So you're only gonna write on your, your main project, we'll just call it, for 15 minutes. Okay? And why yeah. don't you and why don't you try by picking like like two songs that you like a lot that are like really put you in the world of your of your main project. Right? Okay. And then you turn on the timer. And you turn on your music and you just work for 15 minutes. That's all you have to do. Okay. And then the timer goes off and guess what? Probably gonna keep going. Well, well you, the timer goes off and then you say, okay, good. And you, you congratulate yourself like Lou is good at. You go, yeah, good job. All right, pat yourself on the back. Okay, come on, 15 minutes more. It's like if you ever try to run a marathon, you know, you gotta do it in little, little bits. To do 15 minutes, then 15 minutes, then 15 minutes, then 15 minutes. And that's all you're going to work on today. You're only going to work on your goal project in little 15-minute bursts. Okay. Okay. And just try to give yourself as much positive encouragement as you can. And tell the other projects, like these other people that you're dating, hey, I'm serious about this one, okay? I'm going to see where this goes. At least for another, you know, 40 pages. And then I can get with you, but I'm not going to get with you right yet. I'm not going to answer your phone call. I'm going to see what, where it goes with this person. Okay. Thank you. And that works for dating as well, for those of you. I don't know. Okay. But try that. See what it's like, Emma. Give yourself a, a week and then come back. If you can come back next time we're here, which I think is next week, and check in. And we'll, we'll talk about it some more if you want. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome so much. Hey, thank you so much, Emma. Uh, Samantha, please unmute yourself. Hey, Samantha. Hi. How are you? So that partially answered my question, but I'm dealing with a historical, you know, it's it's turned into a lot of different things. So 
I'm just trying to see where it goes and working on the, I'm writing, you know, a piece about 9-11, which we've shared. Uh, and, you know, I have the insider sort of, you know, having, because I was a responder and I'm trying to do this in a way where I'm trying to figure out who the bad guy is. So it's more of a statement of, you know, people have a lot of perspective about, you know, first responders that they're all perfect. And I can say we all were not. So I'm just, I mean, it's more of a statement of, I'm trying to figure out the bad guy and I'm finding that writing a biography is, is has been helpful. I'm just getting distracted by like the, the process of writing biographies for everybody that I've sort of come to a place of, I've got it. It's been very helpful to sort of switch gears, put those in a box and then come back to an outline. It's just, I'm, I'm trying to like focus. It's going in a lot of different directions. I'm trying to focus it. I just, I'm just getting to a point of like, it's going to be a musical and I don't care. That's, that's how I feel of it's what it is. So, um, yeah, there's been a lot of things. I've had a lot of like major life events. So I'm trying to focus. So that's that what was this has been really helpful just to remind me that there is a way to focus. I just have to mm -hmm. sit. So the tools have been amazing. I've just been trying to take things out of out of the four boxes that I put them in. I hear you, Samantha. Would is it helpful for you to think of I'm gonna write for short bursts every day? I'm not going to write for a long, you know, long, you know, an hour or whatever. I'm going to write, you can even do 10 minutes. I'm just going to write, I'm going to pick one character and write about them for 10 minutes or one person in your case, you know, I'm going to pick one person and just write about them for 10 minutes or even five minutes. Yeah, five that's, minutes actually, better. I, yeah that's actually really helpful because I, I think I'm trying to figure out who my characters are and who's, who's going to be the main person and who's going to, I, there are some that I'm like, I, you know what, you're not really going to give me anything. And I'm trying to focus on the next, but that's really helpful because I do a lot of writing on the subway. I do a lot of writing when I'm doing other stuff. It's just pulling it off the phone and, you know, making sure that when I do the 10 minutes, it's productive. Right, right. As history has gone on and things have happened and the, the site has changed. And, you know, it's, I think it's important people at, it's people are forgetting because it's more we're 22 years out mm -hmm. that the kids who were they were children i want to make sure that they understand what happened but in a palatable way mm -hmm. so that's yeah so i think yeah that's that's great advice instead of me trying to say i'm going to write the whole thing in one sitting which is not not going to benefit yeah, yeah again it's the it's the marathon analogy i mean you know I mean, if, if we're not if we're not trained marathoners to think we're going to go out and run a marathon right now, you know, it's you want to as much as we can. We want to set ourselves up for success. You want to set yourself up for success. So if you're only able to run, you know, 100 yards, then just do that. You know, if, if you if you can write for five minutes about one character and you do it every day, or you do it maybe two times a day, you have two writing periods for a total of 10 minutes, and you just write five minutes, and then later in the day, five minutes, and that's it. If you do that consistently over the period of, say, a month or even a week or two months or whatever, you will have some stuff, some wonderful stuff. Yeah, and I think I figured out how it ends. It's just trying to get there. So Fantastic. Be Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Sounds like you're doing something right. Yeah, you just got to keep, like, just keep at it, you know? Keep yeah, at this it. This has been helpful to remind me to keep at it. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Samantha. Hey, hey Ace. Back. Yes, Ace, please unmute yourself. Hey, are you still in Miami? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm living in uh, Tampa, Florida right oh, now. Oh, Tampa, I'm sorry. Tampa. Hey, how is it down there? Lord, is it hot? Um, yeah, it's humid and right now it's raining. Um, oh, we're going to okay. be approaching hurricane season. Okay. Uh, so, uh, preparing okay. For we'll, we'll be safe. Be safe. Thank you. Um, Welcome back. Thank you. Um, so I've been wanting to ask this question 
for, to you for like months now, but I've always been so nervous to ask, trying to ask it, because I don't even know how to form the question. Um, and especially now I'm approaching to um, write another play that I've been thinking about for mm -hmm. the past year, like setting up notes and whatnot, mm -hmm. not necessarily writing it. This, this sort of same like anxiety that I first presented to you when I first asked you a question about like, I, like how do I write um, knowing that there's like, like some expectations of me as um, a writer of color to write about what it's like to be a writer, uh, to be a person of color um, where the same anxiety is sort of tr transformed into like, I can't, I don't know under how do I, how do I like, not necessarily escape, but cope with this like idea that I'm victimizing myself where if I want to be a writer, for some reason I have to write about the trauma um, of what it's like being an Asian American, a queer Asian American. But if I don't write about that, if I don't write about that identity specifically and I present that to a theater company where like I present like a one act play with two white characters, I'm somehow not a valuable writer, if that makes sense. Um, because I, 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 feel, I feel like I'm sort of being, at least in the lower levels of me trying to like interact with like these programs and whatnot, where like um, there are these like institutions that are uplifting marginalized voices, where then I come into them and now I'm somehow marginal. Um, I, I don't I see, see this is the exact what I'm talking about when I say like I don't even know how to form this question, but my if I were to like go to sort of go towards what I'm trying to get at for you for me to like ask help from you is that how do you cope with not being not so much of a culture product for an institution, but just a person with an with ideas, you know, because I just feel so I feel so limited in my scope as to what I can write about um, once I'm interacting with institutions versus what I'm proud of myself for writing privately for myself. Mm -hmm. I hear you. I hear you. And I, I'm, I'm so glad that you're back with us on Watch Me Work asking these questions because I really enjoyed the conversation we had uh, several months ago, I guess it was, about some of these same things. Um, it's a it's a it's a real question and it gets thornier i guess you will if you the more i don't know identity boxes that the world wants you to check or expects you to check right um it it's 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 a tricky thing i think it just acknowledge that it's a tricky thing for all of us right now and it's trickier the uh, again the the more identity boxes that you're expected to check um so i so this is just this is me you know i don't think about my audience too much cuz i don't know them you know i actually you know we do a play and whatever, or I write a novel or whatever, I sing a song. I don't know who they are for the most part. And music is different because I'm up on stage watching people. But if it's a play or if it's a novel or whatever, I don't know who my audience is. So me to, for me to anticipate their expectations is just going to be something that gets in my way. Now, that said, maybe you've actually had actual feedback. Why don't you write about you know the for the blah 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 experience because that's who you are. So why aren't you writing about that? You may have heard that, um, which is a direct feedback from a gatekeeper as to what you should be writing about based on who you are. And to that, I say, you know, I would say like, not fuck you because that really doesn't really get to what I'm really meaning. I would say, guess what? person i'm me and i gotta write about what i need to write about whatever that is see so maybe it is 
maybe the, your characters will look a lot like you and do things a lot like what you're doing, but maybe they won't. And that's where you come in because you get to make the choice. You get to write about what you want to write about. And anybody who's telling, because look, if somebody told me, I have to, you know, if somebody told me, SLP, you need to write about the black woman experience, right? Yeah. Black American woman. I'm like, which one? Which experience? Is there only one? And it goes like this. Oh, that? I That's all I get to write? That's all I get to write about? I think not. I think I get to do whatever I want. You see? So as much as you can, Ace, listen less to the people, the gatekeepers telling you what you should be doing and listen more to the characters inside of you, inside your heart, inside your head, inside your way back of cultural you know, your life, right? Your life story. They're talking to you. All these characters ah, are talking to you and calling you right now. See? No, but all these characters are talking to you and they want your attention. They want your ear and they won't be able to get through if you're only going to be doing what the man tells you to do. The institution tells you to do. Yeah. Okay? Does that make any any sense? and you know i had it i had a student i'll tell you another part of the story i had a student uh not too many years ago who said one day you know what i'm from what did she say i think she said my parents are from iran i think that i i, I might be my, my parents are i'm first gen my parents aren't from this country i so want to write just your average american sitcom like friends why won't i ever be able to write friends I said, well, maybe you will, maybe you won't. It's up to you, but don't not listen to your people just because the marketplace looks another way. You know, just write from your heart and your guts as much as you can. And she did, and her name is Sanaz Tuzi. She did well. Write your thing, sing your song. Does that make sense, Ace? You're very quiet. I don't think you're frozen. You're moving. No, it it, it does make sense. Um, you know, just sing your song. Don't listen to them, because if you write about Asian American queer folks and 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 well, you're gonna feel bad because you did because they like it because it's it fills their Asian American boxes that they gotta check to fill their season. Who cares if you're singing your song and it happens to fit into their marketing strategy? That doesn't make you any less a writer. You see, sing your song. Can you can you find a way to do that? Yeah, I think it'll it'll, it'll take me it took me a, some time to process. Um, I, I talked think. a lot. I I gave a long answer to a short question. So yeah, but it'll, yeah. No, just and really basically, Ace, set up a writing time where you write every day. Listen less to them. Listen more to your voices in your head and in your heart. That's all, really. That's it. Don't listen to them. Right? And and keep asking questions. You know, the more you ask questions here, because I see you here often, you just, just let's have a conversation. You know what I mean? So it's not all like one day we were working on it. We're trying to unravel it all in one day. Okay, bro. I mean, just, just like, you can chime in more. We love hearing from you. Okay. Thank you. And we wish you success and we're rooting for you. If that helps at all, all of you, we're all rooting for you. All of us are rooting for each other. If we had pom-poms, we'd shake them now. Uh, hand pom-poms. That's what we're doing. <laughs> we are at six o'clock, everyone. And I think it's beautiful to end with sing your song and to hold that. Um, thank you all so much. Thank you, SLP. As thank SLP you. said, we are back next Monday. So uh, June 10th at five. At, I was about to almost say six o'clock, but it's five at 5 p.m. Eastern. We look forward to seeing you then. Have a great thank Monday. You. Thank you so much. Have a good week. Bye.